Born from a partnership between Volvo and Geely back in 2017, Polestar set out to redefine the electric vehicle landscape. The Polestar 2, the company's first mass-produced electric car, made its debut back in 2020, signaling a new era for electric luxury. At the front, the Polestar 2 exhibits a minimalistic, though sleek, face. And what might have already caught your eyes is this new closed-off front grille. And if you are familiar with Volvo's design language, you'll easily recognize the iconic Thor's Hammer daytime running lights. As we move towards the side, what you'll find is the Polestar 2's fastback profile with a striking sloping roofline. Frameless door mirrors and sharp body lines increases also create a seamless and sculpted appearance. In terms of alloys, they do come in different sizes and designs. Finally at the back, in my opinion, this full width LED tail light steals the show with its unique and captivating design. But as we all know, looks can only get us so far. And whether you're embarking on a road trip, grocery run or any other adventure in between, has the Polestar 2 got you covered in the boot department? Well, let's start with numbers. With those rear seats up, you get a generous 470 litres of boot space. But if you fold those rear seats down, you unveil a capacious 1097 litres of cargo space. Open the bonnet and you'll find another small storage compartment which is perfect for stowing away your charging cables or any other small items that you just want to keep neatly tucked away. But if we bring our attention back to this boot space here, this is where you'll find a range of storage features to help keep this cargo space organized and secure. So we got a couple of hooks, a couple of anchor points, a 12 volt socket, a strap on the left, a netted compartment on the right, also a couple of lights to help you see at night. There's also a shelf that lifts up and helps you compartmentalize the space even further, also with a couple of hooks for your shopping bags. Plus there's a ski latch and also a really generous amount of underfloor boot space. Okay, so welcome back to another segment of Behind the Wheel. And now we are inside the Polestar 2, the new version, which it doesn't look very different from the previous version. But since you actually drove the previous version, I would like to know what your first thoughts are on this car. It's a really smart, comfortable drive. So when it comes to your drivability, it does depend on which variant you decide to go for because you have a normal range and then you also have a long range version. The normal range version equipped with that single motor will give you around 268 brake horsepower and that produces 409 newton meters of torque, which gives you a 0 to 62 time of 6.2 seconds. The charging speeds do depend on which variant they go for. So if you go for the single motor, normal range, your, you can charge your car up to 135 kilowatts, which is quite fast. But if you go for the long range version, you can, it supports fast charging up to 200 kilowatts. When it comes to charging at home, I think both cars or both variants will be fully charged within eight hours. Another deciding factor when people are trying to choose between combustion models or electric cars is the range. And here, it has been slightly improved over the previous one. So we now have a 336 mile range with the normal range version, and that climbs up to 406 miles for the extended range version. But if you then opt for the all wheel drive version, it comes back down to 360 miles. But that's it. That was all the numbers for you guys to do with what you wish, uh, but numbers are numbers. So. I want to hear, now that you've been behind the wheel for about 45 minutes, I want to hear how you're finding the steering wheel, the suspension. Tell us about it. I'm a fan. The seat's really comfortable and normally it takes me quite a long while and I kind of fidget and can't sit still, but I, I found a good driving position. It's comfortable, it's a fun drive. You know, the car's got a G-Force monitor in it. What other kind of car have got that? It's, it's just got these little features that just tip it over the edge of the, the competitors. It's a really smart interior and it's quite a, quite a solid, solid built car as well. Just, I feel safe. It's not a massive car, but I, can't, I feel really kind of wrapped up inside it and quite safe. I think the layout is quite good. It's a really, you know, interesting design on there. It's not boring mm. and it's quite functional. So yeah, it's, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically has Android software installed in it. So it, it's essentially, it's like a Google tablet, but you can use Apple CarPlay with it, but it needs to be plugged in via a USB to lightning cable. But on the same topic of tech, you've got a 12.3 inch driver's display and that you that, as you said, as your sat nav, as your basic driving information, 
How are you finding it? It's really helpful, you know, if you just want to quickly look down, see where you're going, it tells you, you know, when to put your hands on the wheel, what is, well, not to take your hands off the wheel. It doesn't seem to have much more information on here, so I can't flick through to have, like, my radio information or anything like that that normally you would find on uh, an instrument cluster. It does just seem to be kind of your speed, your charge and your power, and your, your range, and then nothing else really. Uh, so that's kind of a little bit disappointing, but the size of the sat nav on here makes it a lot, yeah, it's a lot easier to use, and it doesn't really pull your attention away from your actual driving. The mirrors are fantastic. It's given, you know, there's a lot more view, and I'm just not having the frame on there for some reason, it, it looks, a lot easier to use, if that makes sense. It can see the road, you know, it knows the car in front of it, what speed it's driving. It's got traffic sign recognition as well, so it knows what speed you should be going. And, you know, and it updates accordingly. You've got your lane key persist. It, you've got your foot by the pedals, so if you need to slam your foot on your brakes, you can. I didn't feel like I needed to. The only issue that we came across was when you're pulling up to a junction and the lane split. If there was no, because it can't see the middle line, it, it gets a bit confused and tries to throw you everywhere. So you need to give it a bit of a you know, nudge, but as soon as you've given it that nudge, it, it will drive for you. I think it's enough to keep it in the market. I think Polestar is a real contender. It's got a very professional look, I find. Mm. I think, as I was saying, if you, you know, a business person, family and the boot may be a bit small to use as a family car but it's a, it's a comfortable drive if you're doing long distance short distances you want to go electric because you've ha you have to and that's what your boss says or you want to save the planet and cut down any carbon i think this is a, a generally quite a good car for anyone good well thank you very much and we'll see you in the uh aura funky cat or the boid looking forward to it when it comes to material quality and variety, Allstar has gone the extra mile here. The comfort level is something else I cannot fault here. As Katie mentioned, these seats are extremely comfortable both in the front and in the back. Alongside being adjustable, the steering wheel is actually extremely functional. And behind it, you get a 12.3 digital instrument cluster. Complementing that, it's a feature that's not only for yourself, but also for your passengers. And that's this vertical 11.25 inch infotainment display and as you can see it's equipped with android software so the icons are big it's really really responsive it's also quite sharp there's you know your main apps as well but you do control your temperature and your handling mode your steering mode as well and every anything to do with climate is controlled via this tablet underneath that display you get a small cubby hole which is perfect for your glasses apparently your keys as well and also doubles as a couple of wireless charging pads then you've got a couple of buttons to control your defogging system there's also a play pause button for your media that also has a knob for your volume as you can see so you do have some physical buttons lying around which is quite useful then I have a button for your hazards and what I do love it's this gear selector in the back you will find the same level of material quality and variety because you still got your soft touch materials, you got your chrome edging and your fabric materials as well. In terms of niceties and cubby holes at the back here, you do have your seat pockets. There's a couple of cup holders here. And if you do need to access the boot, you can do, actually you can't do it because you can only open it via the boot, which is a bit strange, but you get a nice armrest and you can't have everything all the time, can you? Anyway, door bins are also quite spacious, but I would say, they won't fit a two litre bottle plus you do get a couple of air vents and a usb-c port down there so to summarize i think that you will struggle to find an interior that's as spacious and comfortable as this polestar 2's interior because i feel like the material variety material quality comfort available features cubby holes everything combined create a cabin that will provide you with a really relaxing experience both for the driver and for the passengers and with that said, should you buy, lease or finance this new updated version of the Polestar 2? It's sleek, modern design, closed off smart zone front grille, 
Frameless store mirrors and distinctive side profile make it a head turner on the road. The interior is spacious and comfortable, providing a delightful driving experience. And with a non paper range of now over 330 miles, it is ready for your long journeys. But while the Pulsar 2 shines in so many aspects, it also comes with a few drawbacks. For example, that foam suspension, which is in place to enhance handling, does create a somewhat harsh ride, especially when driving on rougher surfaces, such as our lovely UK roads. And that boot space, though more than enough for your daily needs, does fall slightly behind some of its direct competitors. But as always, drawbacks are only drawbacks and not steel breakers. And if you're seeking style, practicality, long range, or freeling performance, and of course, if sustainability is one of your top priorities, then this should definitely be on your list. And as always, if you want to get it ticked off that list and delivered straight to your front door, then do give us a call on 01903 538 835 and our vehicle specialists will ensure that you get the Polestar 2 that meets your lifestyle perfectly. If you don't have time to chat right now, then do click on the banner above to book a call back at the date and time that meets your schedule. Or alternatively, you can always browse our website for the latest offers we have on a Polestar 2 and also other electric vehicles. But that's it. If you enjoyed this review or found it helpful in any way, then do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you enjoy the kind of content we've been producing here at OSV. And once you're subscribed, don't forget to click on the notification bell to be notified when our next in-depth review goes live. But that's all from me today. You take care and safe driving.